Let's try another problem. Here's our overall vector, w equals 7, and we've indicated uh, a 60 degree angle down here. Here's our axes. Remember, we can choose any axes we want as long as they're perpendicular to each other. We don't have to choose horizontal and vertical axes. So obviously these axes are not horizontal and vertical, but they're still legal because they're perpendicular to each other. If I wanted to emphasize that, I could put a perpendicular sign here. But it goes without saying that our axes are always going to be perpendicular to each other. Well, please pause the video and try to break this vector into components. Well, I know what the first thing you did was. The first thing you did was write down on a piece of paper the positive directions, right? We always have to write down the positive direction. So I know you built that habit. Okay, uh, and then we can go on to the specific vector here. We need to break this into components. By the way, I don't know if I've made clear enough that when we see this dashed line here, we should kind of take it for granted that this dashed line is parallel to the y-axis. It certainly looks like it's parallel to the y-axis, and you are meant to take it for granted that this dashed line here is parallel to the y-axis. That's, uh, I think, kind of a convention on a problem like this. So we're going to treat this like it's parallel to the y-axis. So now we need to draw a right triangle um, that uses this overall vector as its hypotenuse and um, that uh, has legs that are parallel to these axes here. Well, let's try um, drawing those legs here. Well, I can already start drawing one leg just along this dashed line. We were already saying that we were interpreting this dashed line as parallel to the y-axis. So one of the legs must be along this line. So I'll draw that line. Remember that we'd like to draw a triangle that includes the angle that we were given. So there's no point drawing a right triangle on the right-hand side of this overall vector. If I try to draw a right triangle on the right-hand side of this overall vector, it won't include the 60. So I'm definitely going to try to draw the right triangle over here so I can include the 60. Um, and now the, uh, so I can trace this out like this. All right, so here's uh, the line that one of the legs is going to be on. And then I want the other leg to be parallel to this x-axis. Um, so the other leg is going to be parallel to that x-axis. Can you see how this leg looks like it's going to be parallel to that x-axis? And if you draw a good picture, the two legs should come out perpendicular to each other. Remember the two legs should be, uh, one leg should be parallel to the y-axis and one leg should be parallel to the x-axis, but the x and the y-axis are perpendicular to each other. So the legs should end up perpendicular to each other. And then I can erase this over here. So you have to take your time when you're drawing these right triangles. It's a, it's a little bit tricky to draw uh, a reasonable looking right triangle here. But again, the point was, you can see that we do have the overall vector as the hypotenuse, and one leg is parallel to the y-axis, and one parallel leg is parallel to the x-axis. And um, maybe I should uh, improve my sketch here a little. Uh, maybe I should put this w equals 7 outside the triangle, just in the interest of clarity. Always worthwhile to make your diagram as clear as possible. Now we have to put arrows on the x and the y components. Um, well, uh, I, one way I mentioned of doing that is that you might think of the overall vector as starting from an initial point and pointing to the final point. We might call this the initial um, end or the tail. Uh, the, the tail of the overall vector is the initial point, and uh, the head of the overall vector is the final point. And the components should also be pointing away from the initial point and towards the final point. You can see that this overall vector is pointing away from the initial point and towards the final point. Well, the components should also be pointing away from the initial point and towards the final point. So where should the head be over here? Well, I certainly should not put the head over here because then it would be pointing towards the initial point. I should put the head of this component over here. That way this component is pointing away from the initial point just like the overall vector was. And where should I put the head of the arrow on the Y component? Well, I do not want to put the head of the arrow over here because then the Y component would be pointing away from this final point. Instead, I want to put the head of the arrow over here, so now the y component is pointing towards the final point, just like the overall vector is. Remember that uh, it's, not, it's not really uh, official to call this the initial and this the final point, but this is just a little notational trick that might help us define the correct arrows on the components. So I'll erase those now that we don't need them anymore. We should certainly label our sides. This is w sub x, because this is the leg that's parallel to the x-axis. And this is w sub y, because this is the leg that's parallel to the y-axis. Uh, if we haven't done so already, we should indicate the sign we were given and the angle we were given and our focusing on. 
we can label that this side is the hypotenuse, this side is adjacent, and this side is opposite to the 60 degrees. All right, I think we're ready to start doing tr some trigonometry. To find the adjacent side, we would use the cosine. Cut. Cosine deals with the adjacent side. Our adjacent side here has a length of wy, focusing on the magnitude with the dot. The hypotenuse is 7 times cosine of 60. Time for our calculator to step into action. We're still focusing on the magnitude of w sub y. 7 times cosine 60 is exactly 3.5. Now we can figure out w sub y without the dot, the signed component. using those arrows that we painstakingly worked out on the components. It looks like W sub Y here is pointing down and right. But the positive Y direction is up and left. The positive Y direction is up and left, but the component is pointing uh, down and right in the negative direction. So W sub Y is negative 3.5. Now that we've done the adjacent side, we can work out the opposite side. So, the opposite side would involve the sine. Our angle is 60. Uh, the length of the opposite side is the magnitude of W sub x, indicated with a dot. Uh, so again, I hope that you're taking this opportunity not just to try to get these problems right, but again, to build good notation that will help you on harder problems as well. So I hope you're conscientiously um, when you're first trying to figure out the magnitude, using a dot. And then when you're trying to figure out the sine component, not writing down the dot. So W sub x is uh, the hypotenuse, which is 7, times the sine of 60. We're still working with the magnitude of W sub x. 7 times sine 60 is 6.1. We write down W sub x without the dot to indicate that now that we know the magnitude, it's our job to figure out the sum. Uh, let's see. Uh, well, the positive x direction is down and left, and W sub x is also pointing down and left. Positive is down and left, W sub x is pointing in the positive direction, down and left. So that would be a positive component. W sub x is positive 6.1. I'll remind you of an issue that I brought up frequently, um, which is that um, in most problems, the cosine gives you the x component. But you can't assume that the cosine will always give you the x component. There's a fair number of cases where the cosine gives you the y component. Well, this was one of those cases again. In this case, the cosine gave us the y component, and the sine gave us the x component. So hopefully, after you're done with these videos, you're never going to assume that the cosine always gives you the x component. It's true that the cosine usually is going to end up giving us the x component, but that's far from universally true. You have to deal with the specific details of the specific problem that you're working on. Remember that if this problem gave you difficulty, you should redo it until it doesn't give you difficulty before you move on. Make sure in particular that you don't have difficulty drawing the right triangle that indicates the components and that you don't have difficulty putting the correct arrows on the components.